No, we don't lie. We already in the game. All right. What up, so, bro? so man, everything good, man. You know, another week, another edition of Hip Hop Motivation. We had a lot of different things transpire since last time we talked. And um, now I see that, you know, the movie you were doing, the list that I, that I saw you actually directing is being taken away or they're trying to take the court or what, how, what's that? What is that situation? What's that all about? Well, you know, it's a, a funny situation. But I saw this whole thing coming. Paul. Okay. Um, this dude, Tony White, who I initially met through Dr. Watkins. Boyce Watkins. And he was doing some funny project and I came on the set and I was like, Justice well, not for justice. Yeah, I did yeah. a favor. And I was like, yo, this is never gonna see the light. And this is, I was doing this is conning you. And um, the same dude, we, he was like, nah, nah, I trust this, that, and the third. I said, all right. So the guy, I met with Tony White. Yo, you know, we taping, bro, we taping. I met with Tony White and um, he was like, uh, he could do this and that and third for a certain price. So when it came time to do that, I, I looked and I said, nah, this ain't right. And so I backed out of it. And his man, Mike, was the person, I guess, that's been putting up the bread for him. So then he came back and I was like, I ain't doing no business. So he said, well, this time I got a real thing for you. It's $250,000, you get 25% of it. And I was like, well, I have to have these amount of things. I want this amount, I want 25%. And um, if I bring Kanye as an executive producer, 50%. So I get on the set and I look at it and I'm like, yo, the things he was providing I couldn't use because it wasn't, it was like disgusting. The, the, like, like, like what? Like the location, oh, okay. like roaches and shit. Like I'm not working in that. Okay. So I was like, fuck it, I'll do it for my crib. I had to use my camera. I produced it. You know, I made the, um, I, so, so when I'm on the set and I noticed all of this shit that it's not 250, I stepped to him. I got it on tape. I'm like, yo, bro, you lying. This is not 250. He admits it, the whole nine. So I'm saying, nah, this is different. This got to at least be at he admits, worst case. He admitted it. On the yeah, because you got to think, if I direct the movie, I'm charging at least a million dollars as a fee. You know, and the movie don't cost a million dollars. Nothing near it. Nothing near what he was saying it cost. So I was like, look, I've made all these calls. I had Columbus Short on the set. People had showed up on my behalf, my DPs and all that. I said, I'll pay for the rest of it. You know what I'm saying? Like once I realized he lied, the dude Mike pulled me to the side. And he like, yo, he's a liar, telling me all this shit. Mm -hmm. He didn't know, and this, that, and the third. So I said, all right, I'll pay for the rest of it. Okay. Period. And he was like, nah, I want to stay in it. So I said, all right, um, I got to pick all the editing, but you could pay for the edit, and if not, I'll pay for the edit. But that's the only way you could stay in. <coughs> so f for some reason, in this person's brain, and then after I edit the movie, get a deal for the movie. He comes back and says, you got the deal for the movie. Yeah, well, I had a deal with uh, UMC, um, some paperwork oh, okay. for it. I don't know whether I was taking it or not. Right. But when the movie was done, I went and got Lil Durk, Tori, Tori Hart, you know, all these people on the yeah, pickup. You know, I edited it at my house. I picked the editor. I just let him pay. That's the only way he could stay in. And I don't even know that it was even, it wasn't more than 50 grand, bro. So for that, this person is now saying that number one, he fired me. Right? And then also my assistant director, the guy Josh, which is hilarious, because I didn't choose him as an assistant director, that's who they had, and at the time, it was too late to get one. And he never did the job as an assistant director, all he did was try to pretend that he was director, talk when he shouldn't, and have me have to tell him what to do all the time. But I could see that he was very envious of my life. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So at the end of the day, after he presents this up 25% absurdness, he goes and pays the editor this, give him the, um, to give him the, uh, the footage, and I guess he goes and re-edits my movie and has the assistant, my little man, Dula, Josh Weber, pretend he's a director. Okay. And, uh, what was this dude's name? Quentin. What was the, uh, I just forgot the uh, editor's name that did that, and I thought that was foul too, but, um, and I guess once I heard that they were doing that, because they were soliciting the movie under another name, and from what I heard, Dear Frank. from what I heard, they had a meeting with the actors, like Columbus and all that, and really, really plant this thing out, which I, I haven't really spoke to anybody, but I don't believe it. I hope it didn't happen that way, but it would really be something that would hurt. But number one, as a director, you would never want to do that to another director. It's just not proper protocol. It's disrespectful, you know? So shame on him 
for ever thinking that that's acceptable in any race, but as like, again, someone from another culture who would look and observe everything that I was doing yeah. to really proactively try to take the credit for my work, for them to pretend because they put up some money and they were paying an editor that they own the movie and try to run off with it. After they actually had told me that the, the, the thing was something it wasn't, that the movie you know, was something it wasn't, they, they breached whatever agreement we had, but we never even made an agreement. And then to pretend that they could fire me. They used my camera, my locations, the actors I brought, I edited it. They just, all they did, and, the re and then to try to control that narrative, I think it's very reflective of what people do that to people that can't defend themselves. So Josh Weber is a perfect example of a culture vulture. Someone that watches you, doesn't even pay for it. He's in your house using your stuff. He's so mad at who you are because he's not that he thinks that he's entitled to rob you, pretend that he's you, and then sue you about it. Even though it's all covered. I have it all on tape. I have every single day edited and I'll show it and we'll go to court and we'll do what we need to do. But more than anything, I want this to be an example of what a culture vulture does and how you defend yourself from it. You can see the envy in his eye every time he looks at me and I tell him to, sh to mind his business and go do his job. And as a result, he was proactive, even as an artist, about trying to rob me. And then he's trying to, he's even like challenged me to physical fist fights on Instagram, like I'll fight you. Like just to try to make me come out of pocket and make me look uncivilized. Right. And that's what they always try to do. Right. So I welcome the smoke. I want to go to court. Josh Weber, um, Tony White, and Mud Films, uh, Mike Munster, that's his name. Mike Munster from Chicago. All of you, we can talk about this. You show your proof. Tell me how you could logically fire me and you never hired me. Tell me how with your $50,000 or whatever you could show receipts for is more than my time, my camera, how you could say my footage is your footage. And I have it all taped. How, how as a man you could try to take credit for my art and my work and then try to act like you fired me and you didn't put up a dollar wow. and then challenge me to fight as if I'm going to hurt my... Or, or dirty up my knuckles, or get my suit dirty, beaten on your face at 47 years old, so that I could look like a savage because I'm defending what's mine. How justified and entitled that person is to say that something that I, that's mine, is his. And the fact that Mike Munster, who's a man of color, is empowering someone of the other culture to do that. And this same guy, him and Tony White, have done this to other people in Hollywood. So the only reason why I'm not saying their names is because I don't want their names out there because, yeah. you know, I respect it. Right, but we all know who they are. This guy, Josh, is going to pretend he's a director when he just, I mean, but anyway, I'm glad that we have a network and a platform to yeah. calmly showcase this as it happens. And he becomes another chapter in the book. I know he's scared every day. I know he's uncomfortable. I know he's ashamed of himself. And I'm laughing at him. But he's lucky he got this much attention because again, the problem was like, it's not that expensive of a problem because he was pushing the issue. Now I have to deal with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show every single day of footage behind the scenes, turn it into a documentary. So you have every piece of every, every second day. of me directing in my house, on my camera, with the impression on the understanding that we are partners moving forward and that's me being nice to them because the guy pretended the guy Mike pretended to be honorable so I, he was like he wanted to stay in it so I was like you can stay in it you can just pay for the edit but I'm gonna choose the editor and everything else but if you don't want to pay for it I will I don't care and then he's now pretending he was a boss so he could fire me like where's their con we don't even have a contract so this is further proving how people of our culture and not of our culture continue to try to push our culture backwards by erasing our history, pretending there's someone they're not, and then trying to make them look violent by baiting them into a fight. Who told you about the actors having a secret meeting? Was that something you found out? Yeah, we'll talk about it, you know. Don't we'll talk about it. You know what I mean? Because again, I don't like to embarrass our culture. Yeah, yeah. It was disappointing that they would do that if they did. But, um, it ain't nothing I want to really talk about yeah. in public. But I do have to, sometimes when people push the issue, I do have to defend myself publicly. It seems like the camera's the only thing that saved me. But on another note, um, we're launching the network. Yeah. Um, if you see things are getting made, we have showrunners now, like we're evolving our business. Yeah. 
And now we're going to really focus on that network game and making movie game. And, you know, I'm sick of playing this small, petty business game and playing fucking around and shucking and jiving. It's time to get that real boss bread right. and to walk it like I talk it, you right. know? Where's your level of excitement right now for everything? It's at a high level. Like, only because my dreams are coming true, because I can make any dream I have a reality by just manifesting it and focusing my energy and aggressively pursuing it physically. But as long as I have a focus, as long as right. my energy is focused and other people's energy is focused on the same thing, yeah and it's in the name of love, if that's what you're fighting for, it will realize itself. So my dreams are now coming true on levels that I didn't even understand, and it's effortless. You have not seen me leave the pool in years, and the only time I leave the pool is to go to a bigger pool and a better view. Wow. So what's the day today? What's your day start like? How does your day start? Like as far as, are you like early I get up morning? and I get on, yeah, I get up at eight, because I'm so excited about my life. It's like when your life is better than your dream, you want to stay up. Yeah. It's just I figured out how to make work fun and in an environment that's like productive. But other than that, my relationship with my children, like my daughter's 19 and, she, you know, she ain't doing no bubblegum shit, man. Like she's beautiful, but she's doing a tour for a book with her mother hmm. and a mother's company, a hundred million dollar company that we own together as a family. We're a real fashion family. I'm proud of that. And even my son, you know, we're on a television show that I've executive produced and it's going into its fifth season, going to Pip Hop. Yeah. And to be able to see my son, and even though we go through our problems publicly, we monetize that. Mm -hmm. And we go through problems like other families yeah. do, and then we do what we need to do moving Human forward. Nature. The support is always there. So being able to be a father publicly is great for me. And getting paid for it, it's like funny. And then all the other collateral things that are happening because of that. And then the organization that's happening. So when I, after I get up at like eight, mm -hmm. Um, I get on the whiteboard with Raquel okay. and what I'm doing with Raquel now is she's earned, she's been, my woman has fought with me side by side, it's time for her to enjoy being a queen. She doesn't have to work. She doesn't, she wants that's to work, saying. but she has to relax. Yeah. And that's the whole thing, it's like, yes. But I know that's hard for her though. It's so hard. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's like somebody telling you that. Yeah. Right. But you know, that's my job, my sacrifice, I want to feel the pain. I don't want her to feel the pain with me, pause. You know, because it doesn't hurt me, I don't react to things. See, people react to things different. Yeah. It's about how you feel inside. That's a reaction, but it yeah. doesn't make the case of what's really going on. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I may say something that's honest and it sounds loud because it resonates loud. It feels aggressive. It feels disrespectful, right. but it's not. The truth is and loud. Then, and then you react as if it's disrespectful. You right. even start accusing people of doing things that they didn't do just because it feels that way. So if someone says you're being too loud, someone might say, you just told me to shut the fuck up. Now, it felt like shut the fuck up. Don't paint me out to be that rude person. So what I do see is how people paint pictures based on how they feel as opposed to how things are. And that's the reason why I have to keep that camera on. Mm -hmm. Because people accuse me of things based on how they feel. But actually what it is when you calm down, it ain't so bad. It's like how I talk when I talk aggressively about positive things and people say he's so arrogant. But it doesn't matter my tone. It's really the message. Exactly what I said. The message. And it's not illegal if someone makes you feel a way just because they did something that's honest and told you the truth and it's legal. But some people accuse you of illegal stuff because it feels illegal. Right. They try to react like it's illegal because it feels illegal, but it's not. Because your chemicals are spraying, you think it's justified to react as such just based on how you perceive it. And it's not the case. Mm -hmm. And that's basically been the story of my life. It's dope. And, it dope. It's dope because it helps people take responsibility for themselves. You know, when they really look at it. If well, most not people reacting can't to really it. look at it. Yeah. yeah. That's the difference. You know, people are used to patterns, and they don't give a fuck. If somebody teaches you to do something your whole life, if somebody teaches you different, some people say, I don't care what I've taught because that's all I know is right. Just because somebody taught you something every day, all day, once you're aware, aware, it doesn't mean that pattern is still right. It means the test is to change the pattern. Yes. Absolutely. So we're, we're all slaves to a pattern. Mm -hmm. And the test is to become a slave to the pattern based on your environment. Somebody pushing something in your face since the day you were born. Mm -hmm. And the test is to be rocked to sleep. And when somebody wakes you up, will you do what's right once right. you're aware? Right. Because once you're aware, you become responsible. Absolutely. And that's what I see people doing. Because someone told them it's all right to eat a certain food their whole life or believe something a certain way, for a hundred straight years, because the minute they believe or be, get told that it's something different, they say fuck that. What, what you're explaining is, here we go again. You, I mean, you, I mean, you're saying the truth, 
because it's under the law of cause and effect, which is the law of the universe, the main, one of the major laws, and meaning that the person that reacts to things becomes a slave to someone else's cause that produces that person's effects. When you take response ability, you have an ability to respond a certain way. You become the cause that produces the effects you want to see. Do you mind if I ask you a question? I'm Absolutely. Responsibility. Responsibility. With these laws. Yes, sir. What do you think happens when you break them? Any law can be broken, but there's consequences for breaking any That's law. That's my question. What's the consequence? What's the collateral damage of breaking these laws? There's different consequences. You know what I think it is? It's karma. It's, it's, there's the laws of karma that come down on you. Yeah, but those aren't obvious. I the, think the law, yeah, the law, know, laws you know of I, karma are not obvious. You don't get stung by a bee because you slap somebody right you, off. You know when I you. think you get made aware of those things? Past the tombstone. I think people don't hustle but past the tomb, but to the tombstone. They don't hustle past the tombstone. <laughs> I think they think after life's over there's no repercussions. They don't answer for anything that they didn't that they did uh, privately. Right. But what happens past the tombstone, I think life is everlasting because energy transfers. Well, the whole and I think you have to stand you I think you have to stand accountable. Yeah. So I think people should start to think about right. what laws they're breaking that they have to stand accountable, not by man, well, but by whoever is the creator of love. To add on to what you're saying. Because God right. is the creator of love. Right. And right. that's the currency that we're supposed to be fighting for. Right. You can for. either build so, with love or you can build so anything, with stone. So that's to what me, the whole representation so is. So to me, if our God that created us is the creator of love. Any violation of love, you will stand accountable for in okay. a very long way. Okay, or at so, least you'll so, have to teach that, get taught that lesson until well, you learn it. What you're talking about now is called a, a transgression. That means to break the law. And all forms of transgressions are called theft. I if you lie to someone and you don't allow them to make a decision, that's theft. If you rape someone and you don't allow them to have rights over their physical body, that's theft. You have taken their right away from them to control their being. I get essence. what this is now. Okay. Right. Can we take a break to pay homage or take notice that um, you've been working out. Absolutely. And um, his shirt. You want to change the narrative. I want to finish it. But I, want, I want to finish well, my transgressions. Like, I, I just want to Because it helps people. It helps people I just understand was, what I was, they're doing. I was understanding doing. these now. Right, 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 right. So I just wanted to make sure y'all know right. that when you work hard, you get to reap the benefits so physically. Certain results. Absolutely. And you've done it. And then you could start doing all of these things and stuff yeah, like that. Right. And it makes sense. But I get it now. You get now. You get, so what a transgression. <laughs> <laughs> what a transgression basically is any form of theft. So just like you said, the guy lied to you about what the real deal was about the money. That's a transgression well, he because he didn't me. give. Yeah, he didn't give you the right to make a decision based on what was real. Right. He but, broke the but, law. But the thing that was so surprising right. about that situation. That's universal was, law. Despite the fact that he was caught lying, he still expected me to trust him. He still expected me to respect him. Like, once you lie to a person about anything, at least where I'm from, you no longer have that credibility, that respect about anything. I no longer trust you until you build a whole nother pattern for like 10 straight years of not lying. Mm -hmm. Especially when you lie about something little. Small, right. But when you're playing with people that are like, you know, putting their name and their word on the line to get other people to do things, it's not fair. So what happened in that instance is because I was a man of my word, I told Columbus and I told people that I was gonna direct this movie, that whether they had the money or not, I was going and was willing to pay for the movie. And I waived my fee and did what was right by the project, but instead these people tried to use that as more of a con and then try to like make a lawsuit first. And the only reason why he did it was because when I saw what they was doing, I was texting them like, okay, Josh said you're pretending that you directed it, I'm suing you, period. So you better go get lawyered up. He's a slave to but your But he's, he's a silly guy, you know, he's, he's to see the thing is a soldier could never, and Kev Childs taught me that from uh, Don David, uh, we were talking about something, he said, yeah. you know what Dane, I can't be mad at certain things because a soldier could never check a general. You understand what I'm saying? But my thing is if I see a soldier and he has the potential, I'm gonna teach him how to be a general and we're gonna fight together. Yeah. So he could go and train more soldiers to turn more soldiers into generals. You understand what right. I'm saying? This happens like why you just eat at your table. But this guy, right. he's a soldier for the wrong cause and he needs to be put out the equation in a very legal way and other people need to know to be warned against him because these guys have been doing this and on my DM I'm getting a lot of different people telling me 
that they've had similar situations. So probably what I'll do is I'll have everybody come together because a lot of people don't have the means or the wherewithal to fight. So yeah. if Tony White or Josh Weber or um, what's his name? Um, Mike Munster has robbed you in any movies in Hollywood, anything like that. Just go to my DM, let me know, and whatever lawsuit I put together, we could all put it. And also, um, I think uh, you should ask Dr. Watkins about it too. Okay. Okay. I mean, they can hear this up at ballinginfo at gmail.com. Just send a message there. I just think we to. have to come together to stop anybody. Because usually when somebody does that to me, pulls, they, or they try it on me, that means they've done it a lot to other people and they've gotten away with it to the extent they think they could do it to somebody that could fight back. And that's them being addicted to their pattern. Yeah. They're so addicted to their pattern that they can't stop themselves knowing that I'm going to break their pattern. It's like they just hit the Titanic and they don't even know it. You understand what I'm saying? This shit stops here. And for people that aren't built like that, I don't judge them. You know, for all the soldiers and people that want to be generals, I'll help you. Use my platform, we can use my lawyer, but I'm doing this for us. We have to make examples of guys like Josh Weber, culture vultures that try to take the credit and erase us for things we do because they envy us and they can't be us and they can't sweat the sauce. Their names aren't barbecue, they're just ducks. You feel me? Then I also saw the name's that. not barbecue. They're barbecue. You know what I'm saying? Word. I also saw that uh, they were saying also that you you were uh, paying off a lot of debt as of recently. So that's what business is. Yeah, but that was in the press, and I was like, that's Yeah, that's dope. Place. Yeah. Yeah. Did they say it in a bad way? No, nah, they were saying it in a good way. Oh, they did. Yeah. Who said that? That was on. Uh, it was all hip hop. Was it all hip hop? Oh yeah. Little yeah. sites. Yeah. They were yeah. talking about yeah, how yeah, you've yeah. been paying your debt off. And, just getting things in order. Well, that's you know? what you do in business, you yeah. know? It's like, when you don't have it, you don't rush to pay off the debt. You know, you get yeah. your money together, you get straight. You survive and do what you have to do. You do what you got to do, and when you get it, you pay it. And people respect that. And while you're doing that, you just pay down on it. Yeah. But you know, I've had timing issues. I've had things that, you know, I haven't foreseen. That's what happens with business. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to never say I don't have debt. Every company has debt. Yeah. Uh, uh, Netflix has a, a billion dollars worth of debt every fucking year. Yeah. You know, all the other people that you guys talk about, every time you talk about the things they're doing, there's debt uh, uh, attached to it. So I'm a company that has debt. But what it's publicly showing is that I pay my debt. I don't ask for loans to pay my debt. So if I don't pay Peter to pay Paul, or, you know, I don't get from Peter to yeah, pay, pay Paul. Yeah. I'll pay you down and I'll get it when I get it. I'll give it to you when I get it. With a vig on it. And that's part of business. It all comes with the game. When you're trying to take over the world, it doesn't happen perfect. When you're funding your own war, that's why we're dependent on certain banks because they can't go to war without the support of a bank. Yeah. You can't go to business without a war pool. That's usually a fund. My fund is my pocket. My war chest is my pocket. And I've done it the old independent way, that guerrilla warfare way where you go to the hills and you correct, collect soldiers the closer you get. And by the time you get there, you got a whole army. And because you're fighting for love, Everything else that's not got to get the fuck out and everything changes. Good now will run the rest of this fucking universe because swag rules. You feel me? Mm. You know, I'm going to make good look gangster because it is. Absolutely. This network is looking and, and spectacular. You know, thank you. And, 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 and the programming isn't programming, it's deprogramming. You know, it's to break the pattern. This is programming to break the pra programming of regular shit. I'm not going to be promoting unhealthy things on my network, man. Right. You know? And if I do, I got to figure out how to turn that around. Use their money to promote good shit. So if you do see a, a, a commercial about something negative, it's going to be a whole program about why not to use it. And they're going to pay for it. And that's what be that. But that's the only way I'm doing it. You that's feel dope. me? That's dope. Yeah. So when is the official launch of the network right now? What, what are we looking at? Well, I was going to make an announcement this week, but I think I'm going to make it next week, and then I'll launch it a week or two after. I just want to make sure Everything that I have everything place. in order. Right. You see, we've been rehearsing a lot. Yeah. And, you know, again, there's always issues. Also, I'm launching this week my um, Cut and Sew CEO line. Nice. So this is not just like a regular fucking, you know, a, 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 a blank that you put. Okay, you know, something that's actually... Oh, I designed this yeah, Made in America. These cost $120. Okay. Made in America. You know, zippers and stuff, got the CEO. Nice. So, so the top, my daughter, my daughter is the um, spokesperson so for this campaign. So she, like I actually have a supermodel, I made one. 
I don't have to hire a supermodel with my daughter. It's, it's her company, and she gets to be the face of that fun and that per and in the rear view, she's launch relaunching her mother's line and launching her own book. But wow. you know, and the book is good. I started reading it. It's like I make we're gonna make it a movie. It's really good. Like I, I'm like I can't believe it. Wow. Yeah. You know, and at the same time, I'm able to raise Tallulah. I just want to get back to New York and get with Lucky. I miss Lucky. Yeah. But you know what I learned is. Um, I'm never gonna fight uh, any of my kids' moms because it hurts the kid, you know. And as long as he's happy, he knows that I'm here. You know, I'm gonna do what I need to do. Yeah. You know, and it's first and foremost. But you know, he's good. How old is Lucky now? Man, he's lucky he's like 13. 13. Yeah. 14. 13. Yeah. I'll be here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And uh, you know, he's doing his own thing. You don't return my calls. Nah, yeah. But I, I can't get I'm mad at that. that. No, I, I, you got to always remember how you were when you were that age yeah. and what was important to you. Yeah. So I, I, I don't take it personal. Yeah. You know, I never take it personal. Yeah, I learned that from my, my first son. My son, yeah. Yeah, you know, like I said, we right, had right, those. Right, right. So, you know, at the end of the day, I still have the same exact human problems, you know, and I just wish, you know, I just want everybody to be able to live the life that I fought for. But again, I'm still... No matter what, man, the one thing he won't wonder is if his father loves him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, sometimes you got to, you got to avoid that fight. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can let time heal the wound. Right. And as long as there's a lot of patience involved with the whole process, man. It's, yeah, and patience is all relative, man. Yeah. So one might think a year is a, like, if, if someone's doing a bid and someone has it two years, they think that's forever. But someone that has a bid for 35 to life, two years is a skid bid. It's not even a bid at all. It's right. a meatball. You understand what I'm saying? So it's all relative to the person and what bid they have to do. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. They be laughing at somebody that's crying about two years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember when Biggs was going to do his bid, my cousin was like, I'll do that bid for you. Mm. It's because he, he done it before. He done did like He would have did it if he was going to do it for him. Wow. If he could, he would have did it. It was like, two years, nothing. And that was everything to that person. You know what I'm saying? Wow. It's all relative to what your conditions are. Yeah. yeah. So right now, it's just... This is the this is the most excited you have been uh, in the building process. Do you feel like you're more excited now than ever building anything with Rockefeller? No, definitely. Because I did it on my own. It's about me, and I'm 47. So you know, when you're young, you hope you're going to stay young forever, and you be dreading 47 to 50. So I'm pushing 50, and I'm having a ball, mm -hmm. and things are getting better, and I'm not selling no old work. Everything is new. So what I'm more excited about is not only am I selling new work. There's a 10-year brand of, of pattern that's come with it and it's okay. not about anything old mm -hmm. and you know I'm also showing that you can reap the financial benefits from it yeah. as far as quality of living so I'm living proof that you can take care of your family people could lie about you they could bomb on you publicly you don't have to be nice all you have to do is put your head down all you have to do is put your family and your woman first your kids first and everything comes to you and even when you're 47 and 50 you could still be crispy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you don't have to be old. Old is a mentality, it's a box that you put yourself into. Yeah. You just have to keep creating cool shit. Yes. And you have nothing to worry about. You become right. a magnet for everything you want. And again, you don't have to run around, tap dance on a fucking red carpet. You've seen me laugh at every single thing they said about me for 10 years. You saw it. You saw how I was living the whole 10 years. Before that, you saw how yeah. I made no aggressive attempt to change anyone's perspective on me because right. I could care less what people think. Yeah. And you saw how I created, I learned, I put up my own. You saw people come, pause, and go. Yeah. Like you saw them pretend they were my friends and then when I don't give them nothing no more, how they break out, how they overtly just act like they don't know me when they see me. Mm. Have no respect to our brotherhood. And that's another one thing I want to say and then we're going to end this. Um, Everyone has a brotherhood, a different brotherhood with a different person. I agree. You know, you have a different experience. You might do a bid with a person, you might go to camp with a person, you might have a brother with a person because you're both diabetic. But at the end of the day, you always respect that brotherhood. Yeah. So no matter what brotherhood I have with anybody, it will be respected. Yes. But when somebody disrespects the brotherhood, the thing that you both agreed to, that shit hurts. Because a brotherhood means you looked at someone like a brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And my brothers, Certain brothers, they violated my brotherhood. I've looked out them for them. I, my family's looked out for them. And with no explanation, they just disrespect me and act like I don't ex exist in front of people. And when I ask them about it, they don't even think I deserve an explanation. Mm. Like I'm not a man. No explanation. 
And the only thing that hurts, I mean, cried in public while this person just sat there and act like he didn't know me for no reason. And the thing that hurt the worst is he disrespected our brotherhood. So if that person wants to run around and they want to act like we friends and we cool so they can monetize our history, talk about why you don't respect our brotherhood. Why I'm being treated like that and I've done nothing but be your brother. Why? And why I shouldn't feel a way about it. You know, and that, that was an emotional moment because that shit hurt. It hurts when your brother disrespects your brotherhood, no matter what it is. Like, I got my homeboy Barr, right? I don't know if y'all know him. And I went to high school. He didn't go to my high school, but he was friendly with someone. I've known him since high school. So if I see him today, I respect that brotherhood of what we had and with our experience back then, no matter what. For everything. Nothing comes before that brotherhood. Wow. No, we didn't put in no work together. We ain't rob niggas. We ain't put. We ain't go to jail. Right. None of that. Right. We just knew of each other and knew each other just based on just history and him being the same person he is that he was then and me being that same person. Because whenever we see each other, we gonna respect that brotherhood. Period. That's about. Right. So we gotta respect our agreements that we have. Not every agreement is for everybody. But if you have a brotherhood with somebody, you're supposed to respect that. You're not supposed to disrespect. I don't care who's in the room. The brotherhood comes before everything, but a brotherhood would never make you do anything that compromises your integrity or hurts your family. But you should never disrespect your brotherhood, especially in front of people that don't know you like that, but do know you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Damn. Shit is crazy, man. Shit is real. I don't understand why people treat me like that, bro. I don't deserve it. You know? I really don't. So, I'm human and the camera's on, it came up, I spoke about it. It is what it is. Shout out to the real brothers. To all people that respect their brotherhood. Absolutely. That's for girls too. Absolutely. Girls, with, with girls respect brotherhood more, more than dudes. More than to the extent that, that my yeah. girl yeah. was like, yo, you gotta go say something. Because he was disrespecting our brotherhood in front of my woman. To the extent my woman was like, if you don't go over there, you're not Dame Dash. And when I tried to have a conversation, that person wouldn't even take a picture with me, bro. They ran out. Damn. Disrespect the brotherhood. I, I, even to this right now, to this moment, I'm still respecting the brotherhood. Pr trust me on that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But anyway, peace. peace. What's happening? This is the big homie Kenyatta. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube page. And if you haven't already, hit the notification so you can get an alert each and every time our hip-hop motivation videos come up. And also, thank you for your support. Peace and blessings. Day tycoon, the type you can't breathe whenever he walks through a room. He flies private, cause he likes his life private. Airport in the cut, fresh off the land jet back. Domino effect getting bang. His mindset stays high ranks. Some are killed by the lake. Mountain is view off the balcony too. He's the exception to the rules when the few that made it through the ghetto labyrinth. Intelligent street savvy maverick Who had plans to take over the industry With Adam into genius Imagine what the cleanest catch you know Who probably owns property on Mars on the low Yo, put nothing past the network is massive From Joe Schmo cast the most legendary classic Plastered all over the wall for our collector Jazz loving wine kind of saw with plenty extras Tycoon is just to me like a A person that owns more than one business And not a person that raises the money person that cuts the check. So you know they're saying use other people's money? The tycoon is the other people. I'm the other people. That's why, you know what I mean, I'm not a mogul. Mogul can use other people's money. Tycoons use their own. Never go corporate on some independent forfeit. Wait for the future. Confidence booster. Against all odds, the powers remain so If we could arrange our lives so that our thought process, when things happen to us, we did not curse the wind that brought the obstacle, but bless the wind that brought the obstacle, realizing that that obstacle gave us another opportunity.
to perfect our character. If we believed that, if we understood that, then all things that came to us that might be a problem, that might be a challenge, that might be something we don't want to go through, would only be a test as opposed to a problem. Problems are not bad. That's why we have to solve problems. And in the solving of the problem, you get closer to your destiny. So we have to start to change the way we think and the way we say what we say, because if we don't, then problems will hold us back as opposed to being guideposts and signposts that we're on the right track. And when you're writing a book, Dave? I'm writing it. I also have a book. You know, I have a um, <laughs> book called Culture Vultures. Yeah, I What's it called? It's mm -hmm. called Culture Vultures. I did. If you, have you ever looked at the hip hop motivations that I do? Yeah, absolutely. With the, so, yeah. me and um, Kenyana did a book, and I've already, it's already written. He wrote it. We we done with it, and I'm also giving it out in different ways. So it's gonna be an auditory experience as well. Listen. For mad years, I walked around with my neck looking like a Nestle Crunch Bar. I had to do something about it. What I found is that a razor bump is nothing but an ingrown hair that curls into the skin and causes the skin to become enlarged or inflamed, making it look like a bump. But it's not a pimple. It's a hair that grows into the skin causing inflammation. You have to remove that hair and then you have to use yourself a nice skin astringent, something that can do the trick, something that can get rid of those razor bumps. So what did I create? Bump Assassin, organic skin astringent. To order your own bottle of Bump Assassin, go to hiphopmotivation.bigcartel.com. Gotta know I mean be a little smart. Thinking about something. Like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a musician. Yeah, exactly. I like to spend all kinds of money. Like the dollar, the euro, like the pound, like the franc pause, like the yen. 